simple to go up to the headmaster and simply knock on his door and, of course, you'll hear him yell, come in. But um, it is very simple, really. You can go up to him and tell him any of your troubles and he'll be very, very kind to you and he'll, he'll really understand you and help you in any way which is possible. You feel at ease when you're in his company. To be easy in this man's company wasn't hard. He was a dreamer, a practical dreamer. And the greatest demand he made of men was that they should dream too, that they should see his vision of a great Jewish school and help to make of it reality. Koppel Rosen, Rabbi Koppel Rosen, created his school and brought to it the best from two traditions. Carmel is a public school in the English tradition, enriched by the spirit of a great faith. It is a Jewish school for Jewish boys, but not only Jewish boys, for today, a growing number of applications come from non-Jews. Today, too, boys from many countries come to Carmel. They like to come to Carmel. The difference between a boarding school and an ordinary school is that the masters who teach you are so much more your friends. Not uh, at an ordinary school, a grammar school, the master's simply there during the lessons, and that's the end. I find that all the teachers that are teaching me at the moment are all very good teachers, and I like them all. I am studying uh, English language, English literature, um, maths, um, history, Latin, French, and um, economics. Most of the work is still done in the old huts used as classrooms since the school first opened. Replacing them is one of the many first priority problems waiting to be solved at Carmel. But even if they are only huts, they've served well, and a miracle of transformation has made them more pleasant and efficient than seems possible. They are well equipped for every sort of subject. The science laboratories are superbly equipped. The generosity of those who backed Rabbi Rosen and his vision has made possible the outstanding record of achievement in science scholarships and examinations that are the pride of Carmel. Good teachers win a boy's fascination as a reward. Here in every subject there is interest, the spirit of inquiry that is the soul of education. Hebrew is taught as a living language, and living with their faith, as these boys do, gives a meaning and excitement to the study. This is the language of their faith and of a nation. It is a great classical language, their heritage. Their teacher, David Stamler, is now headmaster of Carmel. In a school so devoted to the sciences, maths teaching must be outstanding. It is, and has been since the beginning when Koppel Rosen chose all his staff with care and great judgment. The sciences themselves, though, permeate the spirit of the school. They are its grand passion and enthusiasm. And yet they are not an end or the whole. The end is broad, well-based, thorough, and enlightening education. And to find the whole, you must look to other disciplines as well. And to the life of the school. Sport here is like sport at almost any school. A passion to some, fun and physical release for all. The difference is in its setting. Superb, expansive, attractive playing fields and grounds are real treasures to a young community. And these have been well chosen. Every year, at every public school, when spring comes round, athletics have their short day at the top of the sporting heap. But cricket? Ah, that's another matter. Here, as everywhere, cricket isn't exactly sport. It's ritual. It's a traditional dance stepped out like an old minuet. Never the same, constantly varied.
The river? Well, that's the river. It takes time to learn its rules, and a lot of hard work. But it's worth it in the satisfaction of a hard pull in a good crew. Perfect teamwork. Result? For two years, Carmel has won the Midland School's regatta. The river gives much more to Carmel. It's a setting. Downriver from Oxford, the country has simplicity. Great beauty. There's a reservoir of strength in Carmel's setting to add spur to the great leap up river to Oxford that's at the heart of many of the boys. Here, they grow in every way and by many means. I'm captain of chair and I take an active, very active part in the game. And I do my best to um, help all the other boys in the school to, um, well, to take an active interest in it. Today, Carmel's chess team is a good one. They're in the finals of the Southern Counties Schools Championship. Now, they're to play Eton. There's the Loja in the school, where we have every newspaper, and, of course, we have magazines. The library is excellent. We've got the fiction library and the reference library, and the reference library is kept in silence the whole time. And if one wants to work, one can work there. And the books there are really good. Any book that you need is in the library. There's the um, Union Society, and they meet every Saturday. It's purely for the fifth and sixth formers. There is a junior union, which are solely for the second and third forms. Last week's um, debate was, um, this house abhors civil disobedience as a means to any end. The motion was carried forward. We go into the dormitories after our prep, nine o'clock in the evenings, and we use that place for reading, for having a chat with our friends. All this is a school, the real, imperfect, vital outcome of a dream. Its spirit and its success, a living memorial to its architect. How much more of that dream, left uncompleted in death, waits other hands? How much did Rabbi Rosen dream? He dreamed of a community of life that of itself would lay the foundation stones for excellence of manhood. These are the practical, material necessities he needed to give the dream itself foundations. He needed a gymnasium to build bodies. More dormitories for more and more boys. New classrooms, airy and bright. Rooms to help to teach. He needed a synagogue to tie all these together in the spirit. This was the heart of the dream. And these are their beginnings. The foundations of the foundation are going in around the old nucleus. For a time, the peace of Carmel is shattered by the noise. For a time, the beauty is disrupted and torn as a new, more purposeful beauty is created. For a boy, there's something to learn in everything. Bulldozers are a fact of modern life to know about. This is the site of the old gym, now torn down. It was a good gym, and the boys used it well. Today, and until the new building can rise on the old site, the open air makes a makeshift gymnasium. No equipment out here. It's a case of make do and help each other. No bars, just boys. 
Corporal Rosen liked to see all this, to help guide his school and his boys. His commitment to them was complete. He was a part of their life, of everything they did. He was their spur. Um, I'm going to do nine subjects that are... It is rather a lot, but about seven of them are really just in your course, and it's really only an end of term exam, as far as you're concerned. And uh, I am taking a few other um, O-levels, which will mean a lot of hard work. He lived to see the first fruits. New classrooms were early, as were the preparatory school buildings. Then the infirmary, bright and light, itself a medicine for the sick. Like everything else, it was and had to be a gift to the school. For nobody owns Carmel. It is a trust, not a business. Carmel is for all boys, rich and poor. Its only criterion is excellence. A quarter of its boys come on scholarship. And this is how it should be, and as Rabbi Rosen dreamed it. His vision has made possible the beginnings of a great foundation dedicated to the future of men, rooted deep in the spirit. We have a duty to see that dream fulfilled. It is for us to go on to the full flowering. We will now sing Shir Hamalo. I'll give you the note. Shir Hamalo. 